So first thing first, let's go to Home Depot so we can pick up all this stuff. Everything we need is literally there. Let's get it. sand your board and what I did I just sand it lightly because it was already pretty polished and after that I put a couple of layers of paint for me two layers of paint worked well this is actually my second time doing this so I already done one board and this way I'm gonna have four different colors which is pretty nice <laughs> So let me show you what I end up with. These are my little, as you could call it, flat lay backdrops. And I have two of them, which is basically four colors, as you could see what I have done there. And I'm pretty happy with the results. I also have one here, my old one. It's more matte looking, that it doesn't even look good anymore. And because it's all dirty and has lots of spots in here. But it's done its purpose and it's been a good old friend with me. <laughs> but I didn't polish this one. That is the biggest difference between the ones I have here and that one. These ones are polished and the results are incredible. Can't believe for $15 from Home Depot you could get this looking so clean. Check out the other side. What? This was $15 for the wood and come on, this is the best backdrop you could think of. Like seriously, and let me show you the other two sides. They came out incredible. So this one is kind of like grayish green. It's more of a gray, but again, you could see it's shiny. The light reflects in there and it's huge. I mean, it gives you a lot of room to actually shoot photos on because a lot of times when I have like these type of backdrops that you order online, they're cool and you get like these patterns you won't be able to get because you can't draw something like that, right? You can't paint something like this. But they are much smaller and they also come in double sides. I'm gonna link these down below too so you could check out these cool backdrops. I showed it in my other video as well when I was doing some kind of photography, I don't even remember. But these are some of the drops that I use. And you can also get like a wooden pattern and kind of fake it, but they're not as big and they wear out quickly. You have to go through these really often, even though they say they're waterproof and stuff, but after a while they just get used and just like anything else, you're gonna have to replace them. But the wooden ones are the freaking best. So let me show you the other side of this. This light blue, I am so excited about this. It's crazy, like seriously, look at this. And I didn't put too many layers of paint. So you could see, I only put two layers of paint and then I put the polish. So you could kind of see the wood coming through it. And I kind of like that effect because if you put too much paint and if you like any of these colors, I'm also gonna put the links in the description of this video of exact colors of these, of these backdrops as you can call it. So I'm using 
just a small table here, again, from Home Depot, and this was like $25. You can get it on OfferUp or Craigslist from somebody used. This costs nothing. And I have two lights here. One is hanging from the top. One is here. I use it for key lights for YouTube sometimes, but sometimes I also lit up my products. And then I have another light here. If I need a little help or whatever, I use this light again to create more light. So I have perfect scenario, even if it's, let's say, outside is dark or whatever, I can still shoot inside and it works out great. So what we're gonna do here is use these as a products, right? And now we're gonna need some props. Here we got the iPhone, of course. So we'll use the case for that. The AirPods go here. And these are just random things sometimes I would use when I take these kind of photos. And I like to combine watches, keychains, I don't know, chargers. So it's not just dry case or whatever, whichever. I would put the compass like this. I think it looks pretty cool. Or a keychain or whatever, you get the idea. Now we gotta pick the lens and this is my favorite part. Usually for product photography like this, I like using 24-70 at 2.8. For flat lace is great. And I like 35 because you get a little extra light here because it's 1.4 by Sigma. This is probably one of my favorite lenses. It's pretty beat up, but it's a beast of a lens. I love it. And that's what we're gonna be using, just these two guys, that is it. And for the camera, I'm shooting on USR, but I have my backup friend here, is my 6D Mark II. I don't really like the video that comes out of this guy, but the photos are great, so um, we're just gonna use this for the photos. So the next thing is to basically experiment how you want this to look. Sometimes I actually like to open up the camera and look through the lens and it makes a difference because you can composite and see how it looks when you actually take the photo. So the way you see it with your eyes, what I'm trying to say, it might be different because it's almost like you got this fish eye view and you see this whole thing around. But as soon as you start using the camera by itself, you'll be able to curl pin and frame it and see exactly what you're taking the photograph off. I'm gonna take the photo first of all black items here. And I'm almost there. I'm just trying to see how it looks best. Sometimes it's cool to kind of have a part of the image, part of the product in the picture. So you might just have the strap of the picture, but you don't know what's in there actually. Like that. You see what I'm saying? So let's go ahead and take the picture. As far as the settings go, I opened up my aperture all the way up, so I'm having here 2.8. I'm gonna add a little bit of light because I don't have enough. We wanna keep the ISO at 100, of course, and I'm just using white LED lights everywhere. That's kinda cool if I'll just put them like this and everything else out of the frame. Also, another thing is pretty important is to keep your products clean. That saves you time later in Photoshop trying to clean up all the little things you forgot to clean up when you were actually taking the photo of it. That looks pretty dope, I'm happy with this. And again, you don't have to have everything in the picture. You can frame the shot and kind of cut corners and it's gonna look pretty nice. So just experiment with the camera itself while you're taking the photos. Super excited for this one. It better be good. Oh my God, I'm already in love with this. Oh my God, that looks so freaking good. I decided to get a couple more props because I didn't have enough of brown colors in a shot and I wanted to match it all. And I went ahead and got some coffee because, I mean, come on, coffee is brown. So we wanna make sure it's clean, we'll lay it down on the table. And the brown will match with all the brown colors in the frame. And so there's some kind of proportion Maybe we don't even need these for now, but where I'm going is to get the center of this frame. We'll just mix and match everything in this shot. I like what I see, but my camera might see a little different. I'm gonna try to take a picture and we'll see what happens. Okay, here we go. Very interesting. I really, really like this one. Yeah, it's great. 
So also let me show you a couple more shots that I did with different backdrops so you could see what else you can make with these. Also one important thing, I forgot to mention that I also used macro lens. I have 100 2.8, it's Canon version. It's not an L lens, but it's a cheaper version, but it works as well as good. It's just not weather sealed, but the results are literally the same. I love using this lens in product photography, flaylight photography, because it gets a lot of details. And I like using higher apertures, uh, meaning I guess lower apertures, like 5.6 or 7, so you don't get just like narrow thing in focus and everything is blurred. Also sometimes because of the reflections, I don't use the lights in here in studio. I just sometimes use flash. And the way I use the flash is I point the flash up and I have like a big board and then you bounce the flash up so the light bounces from the whiteboard and just goes down and lightens your flat lay. And it looks nice and neat. And sometimes I get rid of those reflections the video lights are reflecting. By the way, I use the flash by the brand of Young Nuo, I think that's the way you pronounce it. It's very cheap, it's under $100, but it is as good as Canon and it does exactly the same job. Well, that is it for me. I had way too much fun creating this project. It probably took me like two or three weeks to make this video. I'm hoping you guys get inspired and creative and gonna create your own product flat lace because it would be cool to see if you guys would share yours. Also, I would love you guys comment below your favorite picture out of all these that I took using these boards. And as always, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and peace out. See you in the next one.